In this video, I'll give you a detailed breakdown of every single raid boss in Amir Dracil the Dream's Hope on normal and heroic difficulties. A lot of effort went into making this guide, so if you guys could leave a like and subscribe, that'd be greatly appreciated. But let's jump straight into the bosses, starting with Nalroot. Nalroot will cast Flaming Pestilence, radiating out swirlies in four directions that explode after three seconds. Some of these swirls will spawn lashes. Shortly after spawning these, he'll cast Control Burn marking several players with circles. On Heroic, these circles need to be placed on top of as many Lasher heads as possible. Spread out with these circles to maximize how many Lashes you hit. When Lasher activates, they let off a Tainted Bloom. They also spit Shadow Spines at random players, leaving a bleed on them for 10 seconds. Because of these extra mechanics from the Lashers, you'll want to spawn them in a controlled manner and AoE them down as quickly as possible. Naruto will turn in a random direction and cast a massive frontal attack in Shadow Flame Cleave. All players should dodge this cast. Tanks will need to deal with Naruto's Dreadfire Barrage. Five missiles in total are fired at the tank, and each missile causes the tank to take 24% increased damage for 34 seconds, and this stacks, increasing the damage you take towards the end of the barrage. Tanks should swap after receiving five stacks of the debuff. Healers will have to deal with his Tortured Scream, inflicting upfront damage to all players in the raid and leaving a 10 second dot on players that ticks every 0.4 seconds. Be prepared to commit healing cooldowns here. After around 2 minutes, Naruto will phase. This activates all inactive lashes that weren't manually activated, so be prepared for heavy raid wide damage if many lashes activate. Focus them down, as at the start of this intermission, Naruto will take 99% reduced damage. While shielded, the boss will spawn Doom Roots that block movement and line of sight as well as spawning soak puddles around the encounter that need to be soaked. If the charcoal does hit the ground, it will deal raid-wide damage that will quickly overwhelm your healers. Players that soak will become ember charred, allowing that player to burn 5 doom roots. Each time a root is burned, it will remove one stack of Naruto's damage reduction debuff. Once all of the roots have burned, Naruto applies a 20 second dot to all players, and Naruto himself becomes vulnerable taking 100% increased damage, so save offensive cooldowns and bloodlust for this phase. Once this phase ends, he will gain a stack of Rising Mania, causing him to inflict 10% increased damage, and this will stack every time he leaves this phase. Agira the Cruel is a two-phase encounter. During the first phase, Agira will cast Vicious Swing on the tank, as well as the nearest target, so tanks should stack up separately and face the boss away from the raid. This swing applies a stacking dot, so tanks should swap it around 8 stacks. Agira will target 4 players with Blistering Spears, Upon impact, the spear roots the targeted player to the ground and spawns a puddle that inflicts ticking damage. All players should instantly swap to DPSD spears to set the chain players free. Agira will turn towards the raid and release four twisting blades that fire out. Simply sidestep these blades. Upon reaching max energy, the boss will channel Marked for Torment, spawning a large soak circle on each of the three weapons. Players should soak one circle while dodging the infinite swirlies as failing to activate any of the weapons will one-shot the raid. Before pulling, you should assign two groups to soak different weapons, as once a group has activated the weapon, they will then receive a debuff that prevents them from soaking the next march for torment. Have your group rotate in a clockwise direction for each of these phases. When Agira has the axe active, she targets a player with a massive swirly that needs to be soaked to split the damage. Players that do soak will be stunned for 10 seconds, however, this is dispellable. While the sword is active, she will leap to marked locations in quick succession, causing lethal damage to anybody caught within the swirly. This also spawns huge amounts of swirly, so dodge both of these. Finally, while the dagger is active, Agira will place healing absorbs on the whole raid. Healers will need to outheal the absorbs, causing orbs to fly out upon the debuff's expiration. Dodge these. The Council of Dreams has three bosses, Erktos, Airwin, and Pip. All bosses must be killed within 10 seconds of each other, or they will resurrect to 50% health. Erktos is the only tankable boss in this fight. He will barreling charge in the direction he's facing. The damage from this charge is reduced dependent on the amount of people struck. However, on Heroic, being struck by the charge will also increase your damage taken from it by 500% so you cannot soak two in a row. Tanks will have to deal with Erktos's agonizing claws. Use active mitigation and swap after each one. Here, DPS should make sure to stand behind the boss. Airwin will launch poisonous javelins at random players dealing taking damage and reducing player speed by 30% for 10 seconds. Healers should dispel as many of these as possible. Airwin will also shower the room with Noxious Blossom, dealing raid-wide damage for each active blossom and standing in these will deal even more ticking damage. Pip will drop a polymorph bomb on random players, turning them into ducks, and also giving you an extra action button to maneuver quicker. While polymorph, players should run through the Noxious Blossoms to remove them and reduce outgoing damage. Once you've eaten three, you will gain access to another action button that can remove you from the form. On Heroic, upon removal, all players within seven yards will be polymorphed, so make sure you're spread when leaving the form. 
Pip will occasionally cast Emerald Winds, pushing players away and dealing raid-wide damage that healers should outheal. Upon reaching 100 energy, each boss has a special ability that needs to be stopped. Urktos will cast Blind Rage, dealing massive raid-wide damage that increases in damage the more he slams. One player that is Polymorph should preen themselves on top of Urktos to soothe his rage by turning him into a duck. Failing to do so will increase Urktos' damage by 500% for the rest of the fight. At 100 energy, Airwind will throw vines at all players, slowing and dealing damage to everybody for 20 seconds. This can only be interrupted by Urktos' barreling charge, so Tank should aim him to run through her. Finally, Pip casts Song of the Dragon, causing all players to get a shield that absorbs corrosive pollen damage. Players need to run through multiple noxious blossoms to remove the shield as when Pip finishes her cast, any players with an absorb will be debuffed, dealing damage to you every second that will likely kill you. Naimu, Weaver of the Cycle, is a two-phase encounter. The floor is separated into chunks via green lines. When crossing over these lines, you'll take nature damage and receive a verdant matrix debuff, dealing nature damage every 0.5 seconds for 6 seconds and this stacks. Avoid crossing the lines unnecessarily, but if you have to, pop a defensive. Inflorescence will spawn grass patches around the arena. You can use these patches to pass through the lines without receiving the Verdant Matrix debuff. Three random players will be targeted with Threads of Life, shooting a spear at the target after a few seconds that deals massive raid-wide damage upon impact. To stop this, you'll need to make the spear travel through at least one line, but preferably two as this reduces its impact damage, but also stops the AoE damage. These spears also damage players in its path, so make sure you're not aiming it through your raid group. Healers will have to deal with the Viridian Rain raid damaged by healing through. Tanks will have to deal with the boss's threaded blast and more notably Weaver's Burden. Tanks will receive a big green circle that deals damage for 12 seconds and upon expiring will explode, dealing damage to all nearby players. It also drops a big grass patch to allow melee to safely cross the lines. On Heroic, the tank will receive a Woven Resonance debuff that increases nature damage taken by 100% for 30 seconds, so tanks swap after each seed. Once Naimu reaches 100 energy, the boss casts Continuum, dealing raid-wide damage every second and spawning two Cycle Wardens at each side of the platform. Split up your raid group to defeat these Wardens quickly, and note that the separating lines will disappear so you can freely run over. Once defeated, return to Naimu and repeat the fight. Before engaging Volacross, split up your raid into two even groups. Volacross will use a Scorched Tail Crash. A shadow will spawn across the platform indicating where his tail is going to slam. Sidestep this and dodge the lava puddles that fly out from underneath. Tanks will have to deal with the boss's melee attacks that increase the damage taken by Cataclysm Jaws by 50%. Tanks should swap just before each Cataclysmic Jaws cast to ensure that the tank soaking doesn't have the debuff. Healers should be prepared to outheal the Serpent's Fury, inflicting massive raid-wide damage. Following this, random players will be inflicted with Coiling Flames, spawning a shrinking circle on each player that deals more damage the smaller the circle is. Once expired, it jumps to a nearby raid member, so loosely spread to deal with this. Dodge the volcanic discord swirlies, and finally, upon reaching full energy, the boss submerges, creating two big soak circles that each group will need to soak. Failing to do so will wipe you. After soaking it, it will leave behind a pool at the location that will continuously grow, so you'll need to kill the boss before the entire arena is filled with fire. As the fight progresses, these soaks will rotate away from each other around the platform, so this is why you need to split up. Laradar, Keeper of the Flame, will leave a trail of burning ground behind him so tanks shouldn't move him if you don't need to. Tanks will also have to deal with his Furious Charge, dealing big physical and fire damage and knocking the tank back. The further the tank is away from the boss when he charges, the less damage it will do. Anybody caught in the charge will also take damage so be sure to dodge. After being struck, the tank will receive a damage taken increase debuff for 20 seconds, so here's where you want to tank swap. The boss releases a furious outburst upon reaching the tank on Heroic, dealing raid-wide damage that is decreased the further away Laradar is from the group. The boss will summon fiery trents. DPS should swap and kill these ASAP, but upon death they explode for AoE damage. They will then become charred trents which need to be healed to full health. They then become renewed trents and will empower the seed of life in the middle of the room. Once active, three players can interact with the seed, forming a bond. Each bonded player flourishes, clearing burning ground and scorching roots near them. On Heroic, you can only form this bond once every two minutes, so you'll have to rotate players. Laradar will summon Blazing Thorns that players will need to dodge, otherwise you'll take heavy damage and be knocked back. Scorching Roots will fixate random players, dealing damage and rooting the player. Kill these roots as soon as possible, but on Heroic, note that these roots are not targetable until they have been doused by the bonded player. Again, then the roots become charred brambles that then need to be healed up quickly and then turn into a renewed bramble barrier. You need to stand inside these barriers once the boss reaches 100 energy and casts Raging Inferno, as this will reduce the damage by 90%. Once Laradar finishes channeling, he will gain Combusting Presence. 
Once Laradar reaches 40%, he begins channeling Consuming Flame, dealing raid-wide fire damage and pulling players in for 16 seconds. The further away you are from him, the less damage you'll take. Now he transforms into Laradar Avatar of Ash, beginning stage 2. The boss now starts applying Searing Ash to players, inflicting a stackable dot that ticks every second. Here's where the DPS race begins, as the longer the fight goes on, the more damage your raid will be taking. During this phase, falling embers will fall that need to be soaked, otherwise you'll take massive raid-wide damage and all receive a stack of Searing Ash. Tanks will need to face the boss away for his smoldering backdraft frontal cone attack, and taunt swap after it as it leaves a healing received reduction debuff for 18 seconds. Now the boss will cast Ash and Cool, summoning trents that start to slowly move towards the seed. Nuke these down fast, preferably before they come into the clear area as they explode upon death, leaving a puddle of fire. On Heroic, they drop these puddles while they're still alive, so range need to be ready to pump them. Dodge the fire wells that orbit the arena. Finally, occasionally Laradar will mark players with flash fire, placing a healing absorb debuff that explodes and stuns nearby players after 8 seconds. To stop this, healers need to outheal the debuff before it expires. Smolderon is a two-phase encounter. During the first phase, half of the raid will receive overheated, marking players with a red circle so these players need to spread away from the group. On Heroic, they will also shoot out flame waves, dealing damage and knocking back any players struck. Players that are not overheated will need to soak the Brand of Damnation, a big swirly on one of the tanks. Players that soak this hit will receive an Ember Scar mark, increasing damage taken by further brands by 500%. On Heroic, the tank struck by Brand of Damnation will also receive the Searing Aftermath debuff, causing the tank to explode after 6 seconds. They need to run away with this as it deals more damage to your group the closer you are to them. Lava Geysers will leave behind lava puddles on the floor that you'll need to avoid. Smolderon will run to the middle upon reaching 100 energy and cast World in Flames, spawning big puddles you need to avoid. Players with the Ember Scars Mark debuff will drop their debuff upon Smolderon slamming the ground, spawning living flames that travel towards the boss. The previously debuffed players will need to collect these as each flame increases the player's damage by 20%, stacking up to 5 times. However, if they reach Smolderon, they will increase his damage by 1% indefinitely. Once the intermission ends, the boss gains heating up, increasing his damage done by 10% and this will stack. After heating up 4 times, Smolderon will gain access to Encroaching Destruction, allowing him to repeatedly cast World in Flames until the raid wipes. Kill Smolderon before he's able to do this. Tindral Sage Swift, Seer of Flames. This fight spans across three different platforms. Starting on the first platform, Tindril will periodically change into his Moonkin form. You'll want to stack up for his mass entanglement that will root all players for 6 seconds. DPS these roots down before they explode. At the same time, the boss will cast Falling Stars, targeting random players with a circle that should be taken out of the group as it does damage to anybody stood in the targeted area. Upon impact, it will rain down star fragments that just need to be dodged. Sunflame will burn multiple players for small damage, just heal through. Tindril will blast the platform with a fire beam, dealing massive damage and firing out smaller beams in all directions that need to be dodged. Random players will be debuffed with fiery growth, dealing damage every second for 20 seconds. Healers need to dispel this debuff when the player has made their way out of the group as it leaves behind scorching ground where the player is dispelled. Tindril will spawn blazing mushrooms that need to be soaked by tanks only. When they explode, they leave a debuff increasing damage taken from further mushrooms by 500% for 3 seconds. Let this debuff fall off before you soak the next. Tanks will also have to deal with Tindril's Searing Wrath, inflicting a stackable fire dot with each melee attack so tanks swap when it hurts. Once you reach the intermission, the boss will transform into an owl, leaving behind lots of feathers that you each need to soak to gain access to an extra action button. Doing so will allow you to mount up on your dragon riding mount to fly up to the next platform. Dodge the Lava Spheres and aim for the Green Spheres as they increase your damage and healing by 5% per orb. Upon reaching the platform, the boss will be casting Supernova. You need to break this shield with damage to stop the pulsing AoE damage, but more importantly, allowing you to interrupt the cast before it goes off and wipes the raid. On this platform, you'll deal with all the same abilities from the first platform except Fire Beam and Sunflame. On top of this, Tindril will afflict players with Suppressive Ember, absorbing healing that needs to be outhealed. The boss will also cast Flaming Germination, spawning many seeds around him that need to be soaked by players. Soaking a seed will leave a 10 second dot on the player and this can stack. Note that on Heroic, stepping on a seed will increase the damage you take from squashing further seeds, so be wary. If any seeds are left active, they will transform into a flaming tree after 10 seconds, dealing pulsing fire damage to the raid every 2 seconds indefinitely. After 90 seconds on this platform, you'll enter another intermission where again you'll have to drag and ride to the next platform. Just be careful with the Lava Spheres as they are moving this time. Again, burst down the shield once you reach Tindril and interrupt the Supernova cast. 
On this last platform, you'll have to deal with all three forms and therefore all of the boss's abilities we've previously dealt with. While there is one final boss in the raid, Frack the Blazing, we weren't able to test this fight on PTR, so I will have a separate video coming out that explains that fight in detail. But that's it for Amir Just Steal the Dream's Hope. If this guy did help you or a friend out, then please feel free to drop a like down below and subscribe to your boy. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.